Fair use disclaimer. For purpose of criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching and scholarship, plus research. Some things in this documentary might not be factual. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And it feels good. I mean, if you're seven years old and somebody, which I was trying to say this to my friends who had children, you're seven years old and someone is stroking your penis, it feels good. Bruh. You know, where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um. Bruh. Mama ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. You understand? Yeah. Appreciate Michael you. Jordan. What about him? His daddy, right? He advised me, quite frankly, to retire after my first championship. Thank God for the Bible. I mean, the Bible doesn't do human sacrifices, so we're on safe ground. You cannot worship God without sacrifice. I don't care what anybody tells you. He's not a God of convenience. God demands sacrifice. That's why you have to turn your plate down every now and then. Sound and logical. Mama ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. You understand? Yeah. Appreciate Michael you. Jordan. What about him? His daddy, right? Bill Cosby, his son, right? Dr. Dre, his son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. They want to monetize and traumatize. I um, felt such a, I don't know, a sense of loss when your father was murdered. I know you dedicated the book to him. Would you want to ever say to them why? No, because I don't want to know. You don't? No. Because it, it probably would hurt me even more. I don't really have any feelings against them yet. You know, I, I guess because it hadn't really sunk in yet. But um, it's a lot of sadness out there with people who, uh, who do these things for whatever reasons that they choose to do that. To know that, you know, he saw my last game. Yeah. So that's the greatest gratification that I can have. Say it hasn't sunk in yet? No. No? I still think about it a lot. I don't look at the real bad part of it. I look that no matter what happened to my father, he's not here. Yeah. So he's passed to me. Um, Tasha Cobbs, hey! That year, we won several stellar awards. Praise God for my parents who sacrificed um, for the sake of the assignment on my life. You cannot worship God without sacrifice. And I remember walking them to the elevator at the hotel, and he's holding my Stellar Award with pride. And I snapped the picture, and he said, Daddy's so proud of you. And so we were headed home, and he and I were uh, talking, and the next thing I know, it was silence. My father had a heart attack in the car. He had such an impact on his life. I watched him pay for projects. I watched him be there, be the loudest person whenever she gets up. It was one of the biggest years of her life, and her biggest supporter passed. Tasha's nominated for a Grammy by this time. Scheduled that following Sunday for the Grammy Awards in Los Angeles. We didn't really know how she was gonna do. She didn't know, you know, what she was gonna do about the Grammys. We all were thinking, maybe we'll just take some time away. And I realized in that moment, no, that even in our grief, we were examples to people on how to grieve as God would desire. Barely a week after the passing of her father, Tasha took home the Grammy for Best Gospel Performance for Break Every Chain. From that moment until the time that she got on the stage again, it was just strength like I've never seen before. Cobbs Litter. Wow. Sister Tasha, we so ready for you. Round us out, my sister. Hello, everybody. I'm super excited to be here. Super excited. Miss Oprah, thank you so much for this amazing movie. Thank you so much for the gift of sisterhood and joy that we have all received through this movie. But I want to give you 
a gift tonight. Uh, it's Christmas time, and you have not been shy to tell us that there's been a specific hymn that has really encouraged you and uplifted you throughout your life, and I want to give that gift to you tonight. We all say thank you, but here's a gift of the song of your heart. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. All to be my blessed Savior. I surrender all. It's all in his hands now. Thank you so much. Thank you for that blessing. Thank you for that Tasha. Thank you. What a blessing. Truly. Thank you, Tasha. Truly, this is really a heart heartwarming night. And um, Tasha. 1999, the Oscars was held at a building called The Shrine, which was founded by William Florence and Walter Fleming, two high-ranking Scottish Rite Freemasons. Hollywood has long been interested in Freemasonry. Gene Autry, John Wayne, Nat King Cole, Duke Ellington, C.C. DeMille, Clark Gable, Walt Disney, Oliver Hardy, you name it, the list goes on. Many celebrities have come out and admitted their connection to Freemasonry. You see, brothers and sisters, they know exactly where they are. No, no. A Mason is a divine man of God. That's it. Who's given tools from heaven. That's right. To cut and shape the hearts of the world. That's right. And build a people Go ahead. for God. Amen. You get back to the Masonic fraternity of Freemasonry. Yeah. Their great symbol is G. You, you look at the, the star on the compass, which is a stylized star of David. In fact, they have the entire Star of David in many Masonic temples. Why is that? Masonry is a study of Judaism. Jewish Tribune newspaper on October 28, 1927, stated, Freemasonry is based on Judaism. Eliminate the teachings of Judaism from the Masonic ritual and what is left. He advised me, quite frankly, to retire after my first championship. Did Michael Jordan just say, that his father wanted him to stop playing basketball in 1991 after his first NBA championship win with the Chicago Bulls. Why would the father of the best basketball player in the world order him to stop to retire at a young age with all the sacrifice, the hard work MJ put to become such a basketball hero? And why would Michael Jordan listen? He had become the greatest ever. He was on top of the world. He was the savior of basketball, the innovator, an hero of all sorts, a pop culture icon. Everybody wanted to be like Mike, but unlike his last dance, this is the real story of the reason why Michael Jordan became Michael Jordan. This is what really lived under the appearance of a sports god. What songs remind you of your mom? Temptations. Uh... Could have been anything that you wanted to, I can tell. The way you do the things you do, by the temptations. She would always sing that to us, and she'd sing it to me. How were you able to get through that time? Well, my family. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's a very emotional subject, so. Um, I know. My baby. Mm -hmm. And God. And God. Mm -hmm. Have you forgiven him. Yes, because I feel like it, 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 for the most part, it's not his fault. Like, it's what he was taught, how he was brought up. Like, we tried to offer love, but you, you were so far gone, you couldn't even see that. A lot of things came out that we didn't even know about from his upbringing. Yeah. Which is like, he never had a chance. What's interesting about Texas is that uh, Joe Osteen that was just picked, was just nominated, I guess promoted to be uh, the spirit counselor for the Houston area. And uh, I, I've told you all these religious people are Satanist folks, and, and, and it's, it's Paul White and Joel Osteen both are spirit counselors for their areas, their area groups. And they're the ones that are in charge of keeping tabs on people inside the group. Your soul, 
to a new artist coming up? What would you like? Depends. Because a lot of people, yo, I just want to be famous. I just want to be an Instagram. I just want to be the Insta. All these people that shoot to the thing fast sometimes, you know, they do things that we don't know about what they do. And I consider that selling your soul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You seeing somebody race from head to head to head and you seeing them with weird type of people. Come on, man. That thing is in front of you. You cannot worship God without sacrifice. I don't care what anybody tells you. He's not a God of convenience. God demands sacrifice. That's why you have to turn your plate down every now and then. If I had come through man, then I could have only been raised 33 degrees. See, if I had come through man, then I could have only been raised 33 degrees. If I raised myself to 360. People don't know anybody that touched Freemasonry started religions, started occults. I do believe that the church she was with, I think they had Freemasonry in that church. And that's why she became part of it. But I think that was part of ignorance as well. But I guarantee you my grandmother was ignorant. This book right here, purchase it if you want to do your own investigation and you will not find uh, those signs and all that up in here. Let me make that clear. Right. I got some books here. Right. Um, you know, um, kind of ashamed to admit, but I, I was a Mason at one time. I was a Freemason. That's why I know a lot of this stuff. These are some of the references, book, reference books that I have. Um, my grandfather was a very high level Mason. It was just they had Masonic meetings and, you know, all kind of stuff going on in the house. And so. These experiences made me really get into uh, reading ghost stories when I was younger. But again, I, I, you know, I don't put it past anybody in this day and time. So in the latest update with the YSL Rico case, a goat sacrifice comes to light as defense files motions to exclude evidence. At 2481 Meadowlark Drive, East Point, Georgia, while in the midst of a religious ceremony which involves supposed sacrifice of goats, reads the motion. While there has been no shortage of speculation as to what religion Stillwell was practicing when he allegedly sacrificed the goats in question, according to NPR, the practice is still quite common in monotheistic and polytheistic and syncretic and pre-colonial religions. Judge Earl Glanville didn't rule on the motion, and it's unclear when he will do so. You wanted to know who I am, Zero Cool? Well, let me explain the New World Order. I, the, the keyboard, keyboard cowboys, cowboys, and all those other people out there who have no idea what's going on are the cattle. Moo. I need your help. You need my help. Let me help you. No one in Whitechapel, no matter what their trade, could afford graves. Obviously, they were given to her by the killer. You know, in, in Hollywood and in the industry and the stuff we do, there's a lot of like insider secrets. To keeping your career going. You know what I'm saying? You seeing somebody race from head to head to head and you seeing them with weird type of people. Come on, man. That thing is in front of you. The true story on how me and David Spade met. I was at my weekly Illuminati meeting. I was sitting next to Beyonce and Jay-Z. And all of a sudden, my boy Spade walked in right after Drake walked in. I was like, yo, Drake, move your little bitch ass somewhere else. I gotta talk to Spade real quick. And then we burned two truckloads of money, sacrificed four goats, three chickens, and one sheep. And then we just, yo, chopped it up, whatever. We was like, hey, be in this video, bitch. And then we went to catch it, had some lobsters with chicken blood. I still have the t-shirt with the chicken blood on it. I think it's a Drake t-shirt. You cannot worship God without sacrifice. I don't care what anybody tells you. He's not a God of convenience. God demands sacrifice. That's why you have to turn your plate down every now and then. Uh, there was a conversation uh, where Jim Carrey told John Travolta he didn't have a, enough sacrifice. So he told him he had to sacrifice his son or his wife and made John Travolta choose between his son or his wife. One of them was going to be sacrificed. So what did we hear about two or three years ago? About We heard about how his son fell in the bathroom on vacation and died. Yeah, that was John's decision. That was his sacrifice for John Carey and, and Jim Carrey and Satan. 
Um, because you can only kill animals for so long, folks. But we're supposed to follow in his footsteps as a person that was supposed to someday join the ranks with this, with the boule or with some form of the secret society that Bill Cosby is in. And as a result, he took another route, another route. And based on that, it set up the sacrifice. And as a result, he got taken out. Now, even uh, 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 the Atlanta Journal and Constitution, the white people were saying that the, that the woman, the woman that they, that they saw at that particular time, the woman that came out to the car, uh, we had on the fur, that was supposed to have been his friend, this white woman, they say she was naked up under the fur. And she's in on it with him in the first place. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's the reason why, you know, he had to give, he gave $20 million to Rockefeller. Which is, uh, you know, which is Spelman College. So Bill Cosby was a generous donator to Spelman College, which incidentally was named after Spelman Rockefeller. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's the reason why, you know, he had to give, he gave $20 million to Rockefeller. It's the first private, historically, black women's liberal arts college in Atlanta. Interesting. The inspiration behind a lot of our names and even a lot of our education. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's the reason why, you know, he had to give, he gave $20 million to Rockefeller, which is, uh, you know, which is Spelman College. So anyway, what the deal is, is it was some type of sacrifice. All of them got to do a sacrifice. And what was really weird was that the autopsy report mentioned external trauma on Whitney's body, but the coroner ruled that there were no signs of foul play. And get this, a private investigator named Paul Hubel later challenged the official ruling and claimed Whitney had defense wounds on her body. Jaguar Wright later said the same thing and claimed Whitney's family saw that Whitney had marks on her body that looked like she was fighting with someone. Her, she was beaten. They saw her body. She didn't just die in a tub, like she was Now you're probably wondering what all this has to do with Diddy. Well, let's start with the fact that Diddy attended Clive's Grammy's party on the night Whitney died. And days later, he appeared on the Ellen show looking very nervous and uncomfortable when Ellen asked about the party. I know that you were the first, uh, one of the first ones at Clive's party to speak about Whitney's mm -hmm. passing the other day. Yes. And uh, that, it, that was, um, did you know her well? Yeah, she was so full of life so full of just joy and um it, it, she 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 always made you feel like she was she noticed you and recognized you and spoke to you and she she'll definitely truly be missed did you notice how fast he reached down for that mug on the table the moment ellen brought up clive's party also isn't it insane that clive picked diddy to give a speech at the party after whitney died whitney and diddy were never close like never but diddy was close to bobby brown the man who admitted he was physically mistreating whitney during their relationship in fact last year when bet gave diddy a lifetime achievement award diddy thanked bobby in his speech and and, and this is a special personal one for me i gotta thank the king bobby brown he, yeah, get up for Bobby Brown, y'all. And with true perfection and being around legendary people for a long amount of time, so. This is the one place that we would want to reunite. I think that it just happened so perfectly, and like you said, the timing was just right. Yes. Whitney is here as a civilian this year. Right. <laughs> she grew up with this party. I mean, she <laughs> her career launched at this party. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great redeemer praise. It's church like you've never seen it before. You come as you are. The pastor bears his soul and more. Let's be more listening. Let's let us hear what, exactly what you've got planned for us, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's okay to drop in and drop your clothes. On this day, most were covered up because of our cameras, but they insist they're comfortable receiving the word of God from a pastor in his birthday suit. I really don't think God cares what you wear when you worship. The, the thing is worship. But ask people outside this congregation about a naked church, and you'll get this reaction. A whole, oh my goodness. Do you think it's disrespectful at all? Yeah. No. It's not dis disrespectful to God, absolutely not. I wouldn't be here. Some of the biggest moments in Jesus' life, he was naked. Uh, when he was born, he was naked. When he was crucified, he was naked. And when he arose, he left his clothes in the tomb, and he was naked. 
If God made us that way, how can that be wrong? Why do they do this? Well, the chapel is part of the Whitetail Nudist Resort in Ivor, the only year-round nudist resort in Virginia. It opened back in 1984, and prayers are being answered here in more ways than one. Management here says before anybody passes judgment, the naked truth is in this down economy, business is up 12 percent. Obviously, we're doing something that people like. Business is booming. More than 10,000 people visited last year. Forbes magazine reports the new travel business can rake in $800 million a year. What does being a nudist, what does that do for you, sir? It's a very comfortable, I'm comfortable in my body, even with the scars and everything else. It's very stress-free. These folks say being nudist has nothing to do with anything sexual. It's about being free of societal judgments. I come here and, and you know, you look around, you, you can't tell who's unemployed and who the millionaire is, who the corporate executive is and who the plumber is. Because there's no pressure to be anything other than who you are. And they say that applies even if you're naked in church. They're caring, they're understanding, and they're, they're community-oriented and they're family-oriented. Uh, we have one of the nicest, most involved chapels of any place around. I'll put our chapel up against just about any other church around. I consider it a privilege and a gift that God's given to me. In Ivor, LaSalle Blanks, 13 News. All right, let's bring this presentation to a very swift close because it's nice when a church finally exposes itself. There is an extended version of this presentation, but this presentation will have to end here. As you start to unplug from the Bible, don't be scared. What I find interesting is that this God of the Bible is very obsessed with sacrifices and at the apex of the sacrifice, he even sacrifices his son. But does the sacrifice story of Abraham where he plays a practical joke on Abraham and at the moment of striking his son he gives a substitute which is a ram. What's also interesting though when you look at these sacrifices that the God requires there's a story of Jephthah and admittedly the Most High didn't ask for this sacrifice but this man made this sacrifice to the God of the Bible, and the God of the Bible didn't provide a substitute. The God of the Bible didn't even tell Jephthah it was wrong to murder his daughter as a burnt offering. Therefore, the God of the Bible accepted a human sacrifice. Read it. Jephthah and his daughter, a wager that he placed, a bet that he placed, and the Most High honoured his bet. He didn't say, don't do this, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. He didn't intervene, like in the case of Abraham and his son, but he happily allowed this man to murder his daughter and then recorded him in the Hebrews 10 as a progenitor of faith. Now, I know a lot of people who have never read that we're going to go, oh, you need the context. Context to what? It's there. It is written. It is folly, in my opinion. You cannot worship God without sacrifice. I don't care what anybody tells you. He's not a God of convenience. God demands sacrifice. That's why you have to turn your plate down every now and then. Big up, bless up, and with every atom, think. Sound and logical.